All right, guys, so we're gonna go over um, the idea of hormones and the role they play within the body and how that correlates to stress and cortisol and how that can start to take away from um, some of your hormones and that can lead to weight gain, high blood pressure, um, which can lead to kidney failure and it can also lead to insulin resistance, which are, um, insulin resistance seems to be one of the highest causes of, of morbidity and mortality, more so than cardiovascular disease now. So it's really important to start thinking about getting that in check. So when you have hormones, when you're thinking about hormones and, and how they form within the body, right? Up top, you're gonna have cholesterol, which breaks down into pregnenolone. Pregnenolone starts to break down into DHEA and progesterone, right? But whenever you have cortisol high in the body, which is cortisol is, is stress, um, if that gets higher in the body, then that can go into what we call progesterone steel, which is gonna be cortisol's ability to start pulling uh, progesterone away from pregnenolone. What that's gonna do is that's gonna start to tank your progesterone, and once that starts to get tanked, then your ability to produce DHEA, which breaks down into testosterone and estrone, um, aren't gonna be able to produce and facilitate at its highest level. So if progesterone gets tanked, you're gonna start to see a decrease in your testosterone, and You'll start to see an increase in your estrogen which will make you more estrogen dominant um, and that lends itself for a recipe in terms of, of weight gain in terms of not being able to recover from your workouts and in terms of added stress and higher blood pressure because also too as you'll see here right pregnenolone produces progesterone and then progesterone enacts with aldosterone which is a natural diuretic that works with your kidneys to get rid of water and salt so if that starts to get messed up then your blood pressure is going to start to go high so stress plays a role in not only increasing your blood pressure but it also plays a role in increasing insulin resistance because there's a lot of um, cortisol um, hormones and cortisol markers that correlate with stress um, in, on your insulin receptors. So if those are bind into your insulin receptors, then you're not able to actually shuttle the way you want to shuttle. So those are the things you want to think about in terms of, of the impact of stress and, and why that can start being a diminishing return on your ability to, to lose weight and recover, right? When everyone says energy balance is the thing you want to think about in order for you to start dropping weight or gaining weight, you also want to think about hormones and the role they play within those interchanging variables. So in order to kind of help with your ability to um, withstand cortisol, one, you can do a, f a Dutch test, which is a four point cortisol test to let you know how your cortisol levels are. First thing in the morning, cortisol should be relatively high and then it starts to decrease throughout the day. Um, and you can get that done through blood work. And from there, you wanna just make sure that if those numbers aren't necessarily in line, you wanna figure out ways to incorporate um, some recovery modalities to start to decrease stress and decrease insulin resistance and decrease, decrease blood pressure. So you can start with some type of low FODMAP, low inflammatory diet, because inflammation markers can also also correlate well with um, cortisol and the production of it. So thinking about low FODMAP foods, um, and you can Google that, low FODMAP, but it's mostly gonna be foods that aren't necessarily um, what you would think of as bad foods. A lot of the uh, fibrous foods like broccoli, cauliflower, things like that are gonna be causing a lot of inflammation within the body. And then by doing that and then also decreasing calories will allow you to become more insulin sensitive before starting to um, do any type of weight loss phase or anything along that lines. And then also too, some of the things that can cause spikes in cortisol is gonna be um, high intensity interval training, um, higher frequency training, which we see this a lot in women who are type A personalities who live kind of a, a higher stress life. They'll sign up for spin classes, they'll train six days a week, all that training impacts your ability to um, produce stress more acutely, which turns into chronic stress, which becomes a problem. So some ways to fix that is just adding in walks that you can do first thing in the morning, being able to walk as the sun is coming up allows you to have um, that horizontal view and it works with um, eye rapid desensitization movement by being able to walk and have your eyes shift side to side. That's been shown in the research, in the psychological research to decrease anxiety, decrease depression and actually help with cortisol production. And then also making sure that as the sun's rising, you're out there getting a walk in is gonna help start to um, produce the hormones that you wanna produce first thing in the morning. So that's gonna naturally allow cortisol to start dropping down 
dopamine to rise a little bit. And then at night, getting a walk as the sun's going down is gonna allow you to start releasing serotonin and start to help with the cortisol production. So cortisol will be high in the morning and start to get lower at night. Easy ways to combat that, um, doing those walks throughout the day. And then just focus in on trying to reduce training frequency, training intensity, that can help as well, along with a, some type of calorie deficit within your diet. So it's gonna be taking a couple steps back when your hormones are out of whack to move forward in, in your progress to get stronger, to recover, and to start losing weight. Cortisol is something that we, we need within the body. That's how we talked about with HRV, right? The regulation of your um, heart rate variability. You want cortisol to rise first thing in the morning, and that's gonna help produce dopamine and that's going to help produce those signals those neurotransmitters in the body that allows you to have the energy and the motivation to get up and start doing things and then as the night goes down cortisol will start to drop right and that'll allow for serotonin release which is going to allow you to be be a little bit more sleepy so it runs in line with circadian rhythms so that's one of the benefits of understanding acute versus chronic cortisol stressors right so any type of training any type of thing that you're gonna do that's gonna cause some type of adaptation is gonna be a cortisol release, it's gonna be a stressor on the body, but we just want those stressors to be acute in nature. So if we're training six days a week and we're not able to regulate our autonomic nervous system with breath work, with parasympathetic recovery, then cortisol is gonna turn from an acute bout to more of a chronic bout. And that's why we need to take those days off and rest three days a week, two days a week of training instead of six. So cortisol is great because it does give you that dopamine surge of the fight or flight. So you're able to act, you're able to be motivated, you're able to get your day going. It can also help you focus. So we want those bouts, but we also wanna be able to control the downward trend of cortisol as well. Oh, so basically, if you wanted to understand where your hormones are at, it would just be simple blood work? Yeah, simple blood work, making sure that you get blood work. I like the comprehensive weight loss panel from Life Extension that covers cortisol, that covers progesterone, and estrogen, testosterone, all the things that you need in order for you to see where it's at. But the biggest thing is you just want to make sure that testosterone and estrogen, they have a good correlation together so if testosterone is up estrogen is going to follow in line and progesterone should as well but if progesterone's tanked then your testosterone is going to be tanked and then your estrogen will be up and that makes you more estrogen dominant and something we think about in terms of estrogen dominance as far as like male lifters go we tend to think that estrogen is a bad thing but estrogen helps with weight loss estrogen helps with your joints being able to to feel fresh so we don't want to tank that either so everything needs to be in line with a with a good ratio uh, 10 to 1 estrogen to testosterone and progesterone should be in line with estrogen so when there's deviations in that those things in and of itself can tell you that you're having a high stress environment without actually having to get stress done and it also affects your thyroid as well so once you're able to have cortisol being as high as, as it is right you're HPA access, the thing that connects your um, brain to your thyroid, to all those other glands. That's the thing that actually happens with the steel, right? Cortisol tells your brain to stop signaling to your testes, your progesterone for it to work, right? So it's not necessarily that cortisol steals from it. It's just that it shuts down your brain's access. By doing that, it's also shutting down your thyroid. So your metabolism starts to slow down too. So it's a very much a, a negative downward trend, almost kind of like the, the female triad, so to speak, right? It's going to cause a lot of downhill problems by not getting that stuff in check. So blood work, making sure that you're looking at the blood work and, and understanding the values that you're looking at as well. Awesome. Just to kind of wrap up, if you were to give top three tips in terms of dealing with hormones and making sure that you're maximizing what you can do, yeah. what would you say? So blood work first and foremost so that you're able to see exactly what it is that you need to be fixed. Um, and then from there, it's gonna be about stress management. So it's gonna be trying to decrease the amount of stress that you have, whether that be the things that you can control, which is gonna be your training volume, your training intensity, your cardio output, and then starting to introduce things that can start to decompress and start to de-stress you. Meditation, breath work, um, walks, um, things like that can be very helpful. Massages, anything that's gonna bring you down to a common state can help uh, tremendously. And then lower in inflammation. Um, so making sure that you're having foods that don't inflame you, um, which can be anything from higher carbohydrate type meals, because uh, carbs can be a little bit more inflammatory than fats. And then making sure that your omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is skewed more towards omega-3 
kind of one-to-one -one ratio is going to be ideal.